All right. What's up with the Josh? Your boy Rock. See what it is. Back with another video. And uh, you know, I'm doing this Coyote swap, and right now, I'm actually onto the fuel system, as you can see right here. I mounted the fuel pressure regulator, and uh, I like to mount it there just to have it real low key, kind of out the way, but still accessible, so you can see your uh, your reading for the PSI on your fuel rails, and uh, you know, just tucks it out the way. And I want to come on and talk today about. You know, just different type of fuel systems, different types of ways you could run a Coyote Swap fuel system. Me personally, I always like to do it like this, how my customer went. He got a new fuel tank. I'm not sure where he got the new fuel tank from. Uh, I believe this still is his, his stock sending unit for his uh, fuel gauge, which is fine because it's a, it's a 92 coupe. So, you know, he's wanted to be matched up. Whereas with mine, I have a 4i. I have a 4i uh, Coyote Swap. A four eye fox, which is mine's a 79 and I have an 85. Both of them are four eyes. And if you're using this style of fuel tank, you can't use uh, the fuel level sensor that works for the carburetor style. I believe the only one that works that you can get is for an 86, which is tough to get. So if you act, act, act uh, excuse me, in time side, if you happen to have an 86 fuel injected Mustang. Uh, that that fuel level sensor is like almost gold because you can't find that fuel level sensor to be able to put it inside of this newer style and you know still use the 4i uh, gauge cluster that's on the 4i Mustangs so what I what I usually have to do is when I do it and that's funny I'm actually kind of going up but when I run mine I use these type of gauges on this particular swap, we're doing a um, Dakota Digital. So that one kind of has it preset in there where you can do different type of uh, adjustments and just use different type of sensors. You just adjust it inside of the cluster itself. Whereas you use something like this, you have to make sure you get the correct, um, the, the correct fuel level sensor. And the easiest ones to get is the ones for obviously for these for like a I believe it's 87 to 93 and so i would get one of those sensors get the correct autometer sensor like i just showed you and i run it like that inside of a 4i fox um yeah so that's that's pretty much how that is and then um so if you're running a 4i that's definitely something to think about and the newer ones that's why i always tell people these newer ones 87 to 93 to do a Coyote swap is easy. I believe, in my opinion, the easiest car to do a Coyote swap on would, would obviously be a, a S197, like 05 to 2010. But I think the more, you know, uh, more well-known ones would be like a, a SN95 body style or even, well, not really a SN because they got the 5.0 one. So I would guess just the 4.6. Anything 96 to 04 would be the easiest ones. Because they run modular everything. Everything, every transmission from the 4.6 can bolt right up to a Coyote, you know. And then, so this one, we are using a drop-in, uh, we are using a drop-in fuel, you know, stock. But, you see that there's AM fittings welded so that we could run our AM lines. You see, we got two different type of lines there. I'm going to talk about that here in a second, uh, why I have two different ones there. And there's, you know, there's different type of lines you can run, and we'll get into that. But this particular pump right here is a, a 340 gallon per hour. Uh, I'm not sure the brand. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure the brand of the hanger. But a lot, a lot of different companies sell the hanger, um, and I highly recommend it. I, I kind of wish that my customer would have talked to me first before he went and got uh, his fuel system because probably for the same amount he paid for this, I probably could have got him a Hellcat fuel pump. Uh, he already had this fuel hose. I, we, we still have to buy more fuel hose because this isn't enough. Um, just a lot of different stuff. So, uh, you know, not really a lot of different stuff, just little stuff like that. I'm not going to say a lot of different stuff because you can – you can take a Hellcat fuel pump and adapt it to this hanger, you know, because that's actually what I have on my, my coupe and my 85 drop. 
Both of those have uh, Hellcat fuel pumps. The first Coyote swap I did, I'm talking about the ones I own, my Red Hatch had this same style, 340 gallon per hour, which is good. These are good if you're just trying to stay uh, naturally aspirated and you're still trying to run like E85 or something, this pump is perfect. Dash 6 is perfect. You can even run Dash 6 lines if you're running a supercharger. You know, I got buddies that's running E85 supercharged. I think they're pumping like 700 plus through Dash 6 lines. I always thought that you would need Dash 8. Um, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to have Dash 8, but it's more cost efficient, in my opinion, just to go Dash 6. You might as well just go Dash 6 up, Dash 6 back. When I did my first Coyote swap, I went Dash 8 to the fuel lines and then Dash 6 back, which will work with a fuel, uh, you know, uh, a forced induction application, but at the same time, it wasn't necessary because even when if I did go forced induction on that particular setup, there was still stuff I was going to have to change on the fuel system anyway. So you're better off just just run a nice if you're going to run a dash six, just run a nice one and then run it where, like I said, like with a Hellcat fuel pump, you can run get at least 700 horses, which is cool for somebody that's running on the street. Now, if you're trying to go past 700 horsepower, it's obvious that you need a, a very stout fuel system. And that's where you start to switch it up. And then even if you have one of these, you change it out. You go with a, a 03 Cobra style pump where they do the fuel hat. And that's what's already kind of cut on these. Where on a 03 Cobra, I know some people's wondering what's different with that fuel tank. Where on this one, you take this fuel pump and you put it here because it's just one single one. With the Cobra, they cut a big hole and you could put three. So you can have three fuel pumps. And that's so that's what I mean. If you're going to be running high horsepower like that anyways, you're going to have to change your whole fuel system anyways. So all of, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself. What I did in the past trying to make it where in the, in the future I wanted to go supercharger, it didn't make a difference. Because if you're going to go real deal supercharger, real deal force induction, where we're talking about 8, 9, 1100, 1500 horsepower, then you got to go with an 03 Cobra. Uh, fuel or, or fuel cell you can run a fuel cell too and then i always run these i like the fuel i like the summit um fuel filters because they're easy to you can get the the filter actually out of autozone you just got to get the part number and uh i like it it's cool so you see right here man i talk a lot i haven't talked like this in a while in a long time so <laughs> try to uh shorten this up but you see, so we got these black hose fittings right here. These fittings go to this braided style hose. And if you see, this is actually a rubber hose. As you can see, and me personally, I don't recommend the rubber hoses because over time, it's not that the gas seeps through the hoses, but the gas smell seeps through the hoses. You know, and so you might, it just kind of, It'll kind of weird you out. And even with the ones like, for instance, with this one, you can use the push lock hoses where you just push the hose over. Those for sure uh, have a smell to them uh, with the gas. Whereas if you use something like this, a nylon. Now, this hose here is a PTFE hose, which uses these style fittings, which is good for. I like this. This is my personal favorite. So the reason why I got two up here is because my customer had this. He was he wanted to run this, which we are. I'm going to run this just for the return. But as far as the pressure, for the high pressure line, we're going to run this. So that way, even though if th this does, like, I don't think this particular brand smells, because I know different brands don't seep the smell through. But some do. That's braided like that. So I just try to stay away from them when I go with the steel braided uh, PTFE lines and they're higher rated. They're high. They're rated for power steering. So I know that fuel not going to bust do it. You know what I mean? These are rated for power steering, which is a, a lot higher pressure than fuel. <clears throat> so I like to run those, but we will run these. And I think it'd actually be cool because, you know, on this particular application, I'm, you're going to be able to tell which one is return and which one is, is the feed. And the thing I like about this one, even though both of these are dash six, you see that these will give you more clearance. Uh, I, I believe these are more flexible just by a little bit, but it's all about how it's all about what you want, you know. And then I kind of like these little uh, 
fittings my customer got to to keep the the wires together that's nice and I always run these uh, they sell these at at home depot and i use these with self-tapping bolts uh to keep the the lines connected to the body and then obviously if you're changing out your your fuel tank you want to change the body this is the filler neck to body i don't believe this is for this car so this is the wrong one but just got it up here for demonstration purposes you want to feel you want to change that and his is actually good because it's a 92 it's not like how my car was a 79 i had to change that uh and then this is this is a must you want to change the uh, filler neck o-ring and if you can get new bolts for the fuel tank because those bolts <laughs> they always crusty even on this one even though it's a uh it's a 92 which like is like the most recent fox body i'm used to messing with four eyes so everything is crusty on there it's it's amazing to me how much stuff on this particular model car still like the rubber is still intact this is still a lot of stuff that's in good condition you know what i'm saying but uh yeah so i just want to come up here and talk about that i know a lot of people they'll run this setup and it'll have a sump and they'll have a, a inline fuel pump which is cool i really don't like it i like for my fuel pumps to be submerged inside of fuel just through through the history of me dealing with cars those always seem to work and last the longest and work the best, in my opinion. You know, it's nothing wrong with the inline fuel pumps. We did that on the first Coyote Swap we did with the Ranchero. So, you know, it can't be done. It's not a big deal. But, yeah, it's been your boy, Rocket Shop. Just wanted to talk about the uh, fuel systems and everything. Uh, catch y'all on the next video. Got any questions, leave some questions in the comments. If you would like, follow me up on Instagram. I'm pretty active over there. And I'll catch y'all on the next video.